Parents, watch your dogs. Make sure your dogs aren't hunching. We can't wait around and wait for somebody to give us our flowers. We need to give ourselves our flowers. Hey y'all, follow me, Carrie Need a Seed. Hey y'all, it's Nala Viva. But I went to the Asian Beauty Supply store and I feel like they just be selling us anything. One, two, three, four, four wigs that I need to work on. And then I have a friend slash client. She's coming today at seven. So it's already one o'clock after one o'clock. So I am running a little out of it behind, but that's okay. I still have plenty of time to do what I need to do. I have these two wigs right here that is ready to go. The only thing I have to do is sew on the elastic band. In the meantime, I am going to be listening to this podcast from 19 Keys. I love listening to him. He is a very intellectual brother of the Nation of Islam. And <laughs> and I just go and I just go leave it there. But I like listening to him. I like hearing his voice around the house. Sam, I'm gonna need for what is his name? The man? 
Dr. Sam. I'm gonna need for whoever running this Monopoly to run me my money. In any case, Uncle Sam demands perfection, and I'll see to it that he gets it. But yeah, so a quick little haul of what I got. I like the uh, Tresemme Silk and Smooth Trans Shampoo and Conditioner. It smells so good, make the hair feel so good, you know what I'm saying? Black strips for slaying the baby hair. Get some more black dye. I have this wig that I want to revamp, and just wigs look so beautiful when they're just jet black. Silicone mix, this stuff is so good when you're trying to revive your wigs. Silicone mix. Developer, so I got some 40 volume developer, 20 volume developer. You use 20 volume for like toner and stuff. And then I also got like a little bottle of 50 volume developer because I'm gonna be lifting some hair. I'm gonna have to wash that, I gotta be careful with it. I got some pale ash toner, a light blonde color, do grow mega thick oil. I be feeling like these ain't even a real thing. No shade, no tea, but I went to the Asian beauty supply store and I feel like they just be selling us anything. Mineral foundation powder and caramel. Kind of looks like my shade, right? Because I already have one darker for like my dark skin girls. Got one for my brown skin girls. And my, I already got something that I use. I use like a cream, a cream concealer for my light skin girls. Don't really be needing too much. Medium 3D Trio lashes. Um, BW2, because I'm always running low. Gloves. That came up to $151. So, they were so kind. Oh, and I did go to the post office. Got my receipt because um, one of my customers tried to play me. Tried to be like, oh, I never got my package. And I'm like, well, it says it was delivered. And she was like, well, that's not the right address. And I'm like, well, when you pay for your invoice, that's the address that you put. Well, that's not the right address to have up the address. That's not my problem. Apparently, like, her PayPal is already, like, set up and stuff. So when she pays her invoice, it it automatically, like, puts in her information for her. And the information wasn't updated. So her package got sent to another location. But apparently, it was in the same city. Go to that location and ask for your package. Retrieve your package from your old house. But that ain't got nothing to do with me. I done already... Pay for the inventory, did the labor, and I sent it to where the invoice said it was supposed to be sent. Dad got to do me, so she tried to dispute with PayPal, and we was like going back and forth for like two months. They kept trying to take my money and stuff. It was annoying, but I finally won, so I definitely keep the receipts and I keep the shipping label saved in my documents. So that way I can always show like, hey, I sent it to this address, here's the tracking, tracking is delivered. Don't play with me. Don't play with me, I work too hard. When you be trying to play in my face. But they were so kind enough to give me a clear gloss because I spent so much money in there. But yeah, I'm about to sit my happy butt down and just, do I want to sit down? I feel like I shouldn't sit down. I feel like I should go to the gym. Oh my god, my food finally came and it looks so good. So I basically got the spicy chicken, the regular chicken. I got rice, I got arugula, feta, pickled onions, a cucumber, tomato, mm, broccoli. This is all that be so good. Oh, and I had to get me some still water because I'm running low on water. And I haven't been to the grocery store yet, so yeah, I'm about to enjoy my food and then we're going to get straight to work. That was good, lunch was good. That was like my lunch, breakfast, and dinner, I'm pretty sure, because I'm nine times out of ten sure that I'm not going to eat again today. But, yeah, I'm tired. I'm going to take me a quick little nap. It is currently 441, and I am going to try to wake up by 530, so that way I can start working on the wig and um, prepare for homegirl to get here by 7. So, yeah.
Honey, you keep on here. Real smooth. You always stay calm. Thirty something. Thirty too soon. I will show you you're so much better than you know. When you're lost, you're alone. Can't get back again. It is a brand new day, and um, I've been literally just staying in the house lately. I've been uh, kind of blocked in and trying to really tap into this element of like solitude. And I am about to run out and get my claws done. Um, they so desperately need to be done. I've been kind of battling the idea of like just taking the nails off and not wearing nails. And then getting my nails done. But it's kind of hard to let the nails go. But I just feel like I'm just, I be spending unnecessary money on trying to keep up with my nails. But um, I haven't made up my mind yet. So in the meantime, in between time, I'm going to continue to get my nails done. <laughs> I was literally working on the wig all morning. And then um, I sat down for a second because I wanted to like edit to kind of see where I was at in my vlog. And then I realized when I looked at my calendar that um, I was invited to an event it's like a Hulu documentary um, trap jazz screening or whatever like, you know what let me just like take a break because when I come back I can finish the wig and then have it ready by tomorrow um, so yeah I'm about to go ahead run out um, get my nails done come back do my makeup, get dressed, and then we're going to go to that screening. I don't know what it's going to... Like, I don't I don't even really know what to expect. I just remember seeing the email. And I want to go to more events here in Georgia. Not just, you know, the typical lounges and stuff. Like, I'm so over it. So, yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm, like, pretty excited. And I think that I was contemplating on taking this wig off and just, like, throwing on another wig. But I was on the phone with Brandon, and Brandon was like... <laughs> he was like, I like braids on you. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, let me just take it off i had to like wash the edges um and i just put it back on i think it does kind of match the vibe of like the trap jazz screening you know the braids i'm just trying to think of like what i would wear i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna mix this fruity brown sugar from um dozier and then i'm gonna mix it with the kale's original musk i think the two together smell so good I'm running kind of low on this. Mmm. So good. Yeah, I do. I like these two together. This isn't like a sweet, fruity combination. This is giving me more so of like that Erica Badu mixed with Lauren Hill aesthetic type of vibe. Like, that's what this is giving. It might not be for everybody, but for me, it works. natural titty gangs be needing it and then i got some morphe settings spray then i got a morphe concealer because i was running out of concealer typically i would like to do nars but 40 dollars versus 10 dollars then i got like a um chocolate lip liner because i feel like the lip liners that i have isn't chocolate enough but then i'm looking and i'm like oh i got this already yeah it's the same fucking one I knew it. This is the darkest one that they have, but this is just not dark enough. Look at that. Is it? Look at that. Look at that. No. Look at that. 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 Look at
blushing because I'm late, one. That's, and then two, I couldn't find anything to wear. But this is what I decided to throw on. Please don't mind the mess in the background. I was trying to hurry up. But I just threw on these like cargo pants. I have on these black heels from Simi. This um, cute little bag from, I think, um, I can't remember the number. And then this top is also from Coley. I feel like I keep loosening the top by accident. Let me hurry up and get up out of here.
turkey bacon, vanilla ice cream, some water. I got six of these babies. And a girl's got to do what a girl's got to do. You know what I'm saying? You can't just wait around and wait for nobody to love on us. We can't wait around and wait for somebody to give us our flowers. We need to give ourselves our flowers while we're here on this planet Earth. So, I got me some flowers. I'm about to make me a cute little bouquet. Hmm. It's about to be so cute. I'm in a good mood today. I said, yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I said, yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I said, yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I said, yeah. I'm in a good mood today. I said, y'all, I'm in a good mood today. Period. Period, boo. Period, boo, point blank, period, period. period. Alright, I'm doing too much. tomorrow we're definitely going to do Pilates tomorrow afternoon 
but Nala is worn out she is like laid out on her back on the couch right now I will show y'all but y'all already set up on a tripod because I'm about to record me installing this wig I'm literally on crunch time I have like 30 minutes to do my hair and then like I said another 30 minutes to shower and get dressed and do my makeup <laughs> we gonna try to make something shake but I don't fuck too much on my damn edges. That's crazy. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we is running late to my friend's birthday dinner. Well, technically it's a mixer. We're gonna have fun We're now. Happy birthday, Brittany. Best Very well. Her usual. Very well. Oh my god. Say bitch. <laughs> Love you. Happy birthday to my baby, my sister. I love her so much. She's the best friend you can ever have, the best sister you can ever have, the best girl you can ever have in your life. I love you so much. I love you, baby. I love you. <laughs> it's a whole week later. Y'all, I was really throwing off my mojo. Like I ain't been vlogging all week. I've been really just focused on um my clients and hair. But I was literally thrown off of my mojo this week because the incident that happened after my friend's birthday was a hot mess. It was a hot mess and definitely a story to tell. But I was just editing this vlog and I was like, dang, I need to close out my vlog and finish my vlog. And I also realized that I didn't even give you guys a synopsis on the documentary that I got invited to see the screening of. So basically, it's about Atlanta artists or, or it's about Atlanta musicians who are behind like big major artists in the industry. And so basically they are um, trying to promote a new genre where they're infusing trap music and jazz music, which I think is pretty dope. Cause if you guys don't already know that I listen to a lot of jazz music. I don't really listen to a lot of trap music, but I do listen to a lot of jazz music. And the sound of trap and jazz being infused together does sound pretty, pretty dope. And so I thought that it was cool and I don't know, maybe a coincidence that I was invited to watch that screening. Um, I really do appre I did really did appreciate it. So um, if you guys haven't seen it already or haven't heard of it, you should look up Trap Jazz on um, Hulu. It's a documentary on Hulu. But um, yeah, so that was basically that. I thought that was pretty cool with a lot of people in there. But after leaving that place, I really learned something about myself. I was like, damn, I really don't, I really have not mastered the skill of like networking. So when I was at the event, mind you, there's a lot of familiar faces in there and I did not speak to no one. I was shy, I was nervous. I literally went in there, did not speak to anybody and enjoyed the, uh, enjoyed the screening. I had like two drinks and I left. I left. I was like, Najay, what is going on? I don't know how to network. I don't think I really know how to like network. Maybe if I was with someone, I would have felt a little bit more confident to like, you know, talk to people or to engage in conversation. But because I was by myself, I was like really shy. I was like, oh my God, you're so shy. I really learned that about myself. So I really want to work on that. I really want to start going out more to, like I go to dinners and stuff by myself. I'll go to the movies by myself. But those are like places where you can go by yourself. But I want to go to more events by myself, you know, so that way I can practice my social skills. 
But um, yeah. Now, to talk about what happened after my friend's birthday party. So, after I take her pictures, I'm now taking my pictures. I hear her talking to like her friends, like, oh, you guys gonna come with me to Aroma? And I heard some people saying like, oh, they're gonna go somewhere else, or, or they're gonna go home, da da da. So I was like, girl, I'll come with you. Like, I was already late. I wanna spend some time with you, it's your birthday. Like, be outside. Cool. So with me, her, and one of her other friends, we all meet. Well, I'm riding with birthday girl, my friend, and then her other friend meets us at Aroma. So we get to this um, spot called Aroma here in Atlanta. And um, we're literally probably in there no longer than 15 minutes because of the BS that transpired. So mind you, okay, so we're there because um, one of the club owners like of another club had invited my friend because it was her birthday and he already had like a section there celebrating another young lady's birthday, right? So when we get there, it's already girls there. So he tells like the girls to move down to make room for us. So y'all already seen what I had on. So my friend, she told me to sit down first. I sat down on the sofa, like at the top of the sofa. So my feet are in the seat of the sofa. She sits on the arm of the sofa and her friend, she didn't want to sit, she just wanted to stand. Cool, so I'm sitting there, my legs are crossed, like my, literally my legs are crossed, my hands are on my knees. You know, I'm very much sober, you know, no one offered us a drink yet, like, it was just, you know, and, and typically, I don't really go to the spots like that. I live, I literally just be going to, like, lounges or, like, African clubs or something like that because the energy is just different um, versus going to, like, hip-hop clubs here in Atlanta. It's just different. Like, the vibe is just different. So, you know, I'm just, I'm sitting there just like this. And um, I'm having chit chat with my friend. Literally, like five minutes later, I notice a familiar face. So, pause. A familiar face, a female. Pause. All right. So, now this female, the reason why she's a familiar face is because she is friends with someone that I used to be friends with back at home. All right, now let's pause. So, a year and a half ago, I had a friend that I used to be friends with. Um, from back at home, she had came to visit me. Now we gotta do another pause, okay. Well, I cut this girl off because when I was in New York, she put me in a very uncomfortable situation and I don't like when, I don't like being friends with girls who deliberately put me in uncomfortable situations because now I feel like you don't really have my best interest at heart and like you're selfish and like, I just don't like rocking with people like that. So I cut her off. Mind you, I know this girl since I was like, well, I've known of this girl since I was like 17 and was friends with this girl since I was 19 years old. But, um, and I knew she was a lot to deal with, but you just reach your breaking point with people and that was my breaking point with her. Back then, I had to cut her off because I'm like, I don't got time for this. Like, I, I don't got time for this. So, I had fell off with her. She's the type of girl, and I already knew this because I could see how she acts towards her other friends. And you have to, you have to, I've learned that you can't think that you're special or think that you're different. You know, I always felt like, okay, you know, I can tell how this girl moves, but you know what I'm saying? I'm different. I'm just going to show her how I want to be treated. You know, but that's, that, that ain't going to always be reciprocated. So mind you, I, I cut this girl off. It, to me, it's out of sight, out of mind. Like, I might uh, remove you off of my Instagram, you know, um, delete your number, you know, all of that. Out of sight, out of mind. I don't talk about you. Like, for real, for real, I act like you never even existed. That's how I am, you know. She not like that. She would go to, like, our mutual friends, talk crap about me, you know. Just, like, just do the most. Oh, my God, we'll just do the most. But I never return that energy because I'm just not that type of person. I don't got time for that. I don't like that. My camera about to die. Hold on. Okay, so my camera wasn't about to die. It was overheating. I saw like the light was dimming. It was overheating and I needed it to cool down. But anyway, so I had went home to Virginia one time and I had met up with our like mutual friends. Like we went to go have hookah and drinks and food and stuff. And we're there and they're and and, and halfway through like our meeting, halfway through like our hangout, they're like, oh, such and such, you know, what happened between you and such and such? She was saying this, 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 this about you. And I'm like, I don't want to talk about her. I literally left it like that. I was like, I don't want to talk about her. Like, next topic. 
and that was that. So apparently they went back to her and told her that I didn't have nothing to say about her and I was just like, I didn't want to talk about her and they stop it. I don't know if she was thinking that I was going to like fight fire with fire, but that's just not the type of person that I am. Like at the end of the day, I feel like you're going to be the one missing out on a good friend, not me. I mean, she's a pretty girl. She was fun to be around, but to me, friends don't operate like that. You don't put people in like uncomfortable situations deliberately and then think that that shit's sweet or cute, like no, and be, be unapologetic about it. No, I don't, mm -mm, I don't operate like that. But anyways, so fast forward, you know what I'm saying? Of course she wants to be my friend again, okay? All right, she wants to like, she's been like doing the most for like the past couple of years, trying to like creep her way back into my life. So mind you, okay, I got two phones now. You know, she don't have my personal number. The number that she has is like my work number. So uh, this was uh, not last year. This was 20, when I first moved here, this was right after like my incident. So I would say in like November of, when did I move here? 2021 is when she was like constantly blowing up my phone. And I would not answer none of these girl phone calls because she would give me anxiety. I might text her back here and there, but I would not answer the phone. Mm -mm. It's funny to do. So uh, fast forward to December, she had called me one night. I'm on the phone with um, Brandon. I'm on my personal phone with Brandon. She's calling my work phone. And I'm like, and it's late. It's like mad late. And I'm like, I'm not about to answer that. And then she called me again. And Brandon was like, what she want? I was like, I don't know what she want, but I'm not answering the phone. He was like, why not say this girl gave me anxiety? I'm not answering the phone. So she called me again. And he like, not your answering phone. I'm like, uh, just see what she want. So he's still on the phone. And I answer the phone, and I'm like, hello. She's like, why y'all be answering my phone calls? I said, girl, because you give me anxiety. She's like, what? Girl, you know. You know the type of girl you is. You give me anxiety, and I ain't got time for that. So she's at work. She's um, a nurse. And so she works like night shift or whatever. And she was like, well, I was just thinking, like, I miss you. I was thinking to come visit you. I want to come visit you just again. I said, oh, where you going to stay at? She like, I'm going to stay with you. I'm like, huh? I'm, I'm going to have to think about that and let you know. Long story short, a couple weeks passed by. I gave her the A-OK -okay that she could stay with me because we started like talking on the phone more often. I started like answering her phone calls and stuff like that. All right, cool. So she came to visit. Like she came down or whatever. The first day, the first night we were supposed to have a, um, like a girls night out or whatever. Like I was inviting my friends and we were just going to have like a girls night out. But one of my friends didn't want to go outside and she asked if we could just do like a girls night in at her place. So I'm like, okay, cool. So I asked her, you know, cause she's here visiting. I'm supposed to be hosting. So I asked her like how she feel about that. Like if that's cool. And she was like, yeah, that's cool. We can always go out tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. Cool. So I had asked my other friend um, that that was going to be our first time hanging out. I asked her, I was like, hey, uh, we're not going to go out tonight actually. Do you mind doing a girls night in? And she was like, cool. Cool. Damn, my freaking camera is like overheating. I'm going to just let it cool down for a little bit and then we won't come back and, and then we're going to finish out the story because y'all, this is good. This is good. It's a hot mess, but it's a good story. You know, it's a, it's a good story. In the meantime, I made me a little snack. It's literally just that Italian flatbread, some mozzarella cheese, turkey bacon, and, and pesto at the bottom. It's so good. Well, I'm going to let that cool down and I'm going to continue the story. So anyway, so... Yeah, we went to my homegirl's house. We went to my homegirl's house. We were drinking, talking. <laughs> that could be another story time, but whatever. Fast forward to the next day. You know, she's hungover from the night before. So we were literally just in the house. She was recovering. I was in the house recording, you know. And then at night, you know, she started to feel a little better. And then we went out, had a good time. The next day, which is Sunday, which is her last day here, you know, that morning, now I'm the one that's like hung over. So, you know, but she, you know, she's up and at it. She, you know, has you know, whoever she had met the night before, um, he was going to be basically taking care of us that Sunday. So like everything, like our food, our drinks, stuff like that. So she was like, you know, ready to meet up with him. But I am moving slow. Like I'm, when I say I'm dead, I am dead from the night before. So I'm like, you know, showering, trying to get myself together, hair not coming out the way it needed to come out. Couldn't find nothing to wear, it was a lot. And she was getting aggy, like she was being the norm brat that she is. 
Um, you know, I feel like all of us have like that friend who can be like bratty, but she was that friend that was like bratty as hell. So now, you know, she's ready to go. Da -da -da. So me, I'm very cool, calm, collected for the most part. You know, I told her, I was like, um, cause we were going to meet up with him. So I was like, how about you just like ask him if he can like come pick you up since he's in the area. And then I'll just meet you guys there once I get myself together. Is that okay? So she ended up calling him. He ended up coming to get her. All right, whatever. Fast forward, she sent me like the location of where they're at. Cool. When I'm done, and that's another story. It's like a whole bunch of stories within the stories that need to be told. Well, they're all separate but connected at the same time. But anyway, so I end up Ubering um, there. No, I end up driving there. At that time, I was driving a rental. So I end up driving there, meeting them, and then um, we end up going to another spot. Mind you, I'm thinking it's just going to be the three of us, me, him, and her. So we end up going to Cop Cove. This is when Cop Cove was open. We end up going to Cop Cove. And maybe like an hour or so later, she had two friends pull up. I didn't even know homegirl had friends in town. I didn't even know. But two girls had pulled up. And these girls, they had on glasses, didn't say anything. You know, I'm the type of girl when I walk into a room and I'm going to meet my friend or whoever. I'm like, hey, hi, how are you? My name is Najee. What's your name? Like, that's the type of, especially if you're walking into a situation. These girls did not introduce themselves and say nothing, no nothing. And then she eventually was like, oh, Najee, it's such, 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 you know, whatever, whatever. And, you know, they had their glasses on. Just like those type of girls that just was not friendly. You know, not them, like, friendly, bubbly girls. I get everybody not friendly and bubbly, but I don't know. They was just weird. So then um, towards the end, I think, like, two, two more girls came. They were a little bit more friendly. And then when we were about to leave, this familiar face girl, she comes. She's already lit or whatever. So now, I think we're all now about to go to the next spot. Long story short, we're all about to go to the next spot. So I go to my car, she rides with her, you know, the guy that she had just met. And um, we're about to pull out of the parking lot of Cop Cove. And I'm following him, he has a big old truck. So I'm like following him. And he don't go nowhere. So I'm like, what's going on? So I'm just sitting here on my phone, you know. Next thing you know, 30 minutes done went by. And I'm like, hey, you know, what's going on? Like, we just sitting here? Like, what's happening? And she's like, oh, well, we're waiting for such and such. The girl who had just came. The familiar face. I'm hoping y'all following. The familiar face from after my... The familiar face from last week was the one who came very last, who was in Copper Cove and didn't want to leave. So we were waiting for her. Okay, so she ends up coming out eventually and we end up going to this paper towel this stupid ass lounge where they throw paper towels everywhere blue lagoon lagoon boom lagoon something like that but it's here bucket so we go to this um club or whatever and everything's cool i'm still talking to like the friendly girls i'm not paying no mind to the mean girls i don't like mean girls and homegirl who was drunk was off doing her own thing now it's the end of the night, you know what I'm saying? We had like a good night for the most part. And now it's time to go home. But I was, but anyway, so now it's the end of the night. My camera keep dying. Now it's the end of the night and drunk girl, I was gonna take her to wherever she was going cause she didn't drive. So, you know, me and my friend be in the car and her friend comes up, one of the mean girls come up to the car and was like, hey, um, where is such and such? And then my friend, she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, well, don't you think you should find her so we could leave? And she was like, um, and, oh, and her friend was like, so when was the last time you saw her? And then my friend was like, she was in a section, something, something, something. Last time I seen her, she done fell down, da, da, da. Basically saying like her homegirl had like fell in, in another section because she was drunk. You know, just kind of just being like, I don't know. So I looked at her and I was like, huh? I was like, you should go inside and go find your friend so we can leave. Like, what's happening? And she's like, um, how about you go inside and find her, Najee, because my fucking feet hurt. That's exactly what she said. This girl said, how about you go inside and find her, Najee, because my fucking feet hurt. That was very triggering for me. But I didn't say nothing. I said, you know what? I'll be right back. And I went inside to try to go find a friend. I walk inside, it's literally nobody in there. It's just a section full of people. And she's in that section, sitting down with her head down like this, looking drunk. 
So I go up to her and I was like, hey mama, it's, you know, everybody else I'll be waiting for you, it's time to go. Da -da -da. She's like, no, I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna stay here. And I was like, well, who do you know here? Like, why do you wanna stay here? And she's like, I'm gonna stay with him. It was a guy sitting next to her. And I was like, I'm like, do you know him? She was like, mm-hmm. I was like, okay. So I turned to the guy and I was like, hi, excuse me, what's your name? And he was like, why? I was like, I just wanna make sure that my friend is okay. He was like, she good. And I'm like, I looked at her, I was like, you sure you wanna stay with him? She said, mm -hmm. So me being me, me being the type of person, I'm just a girl's fucking girl. So I was like, um, I said, excuse me, sir, where are you from? He like, I'm from LA. So I'm trying to be like cute, trying to be funny. So I was like, so you can tell me where you're from, but you can't tell me your name. I'm just trying to make sure my friend is good. He was like, your friend? Man, what's her name? <laughs> At the time, I didn't even know the girl name. So it was obvious that I didn't know the girl name. I was like, um, and then he was like, man, get this bitch up out of here. That was very triggering for me too. At that time, I reacted on that trigger. And so I ended up like getting up and leaving. So I told, I called my homegirl, uh, the, the, the one who was like, you go find her cause my fucking be hurt. I was like, hey, I need for you to come inside and come get your fucking friend because I'm ready to go. I'm about to leave both of y'all. I said, just like that. Mind you, I left her in the car. I go back to my car, my car is gone. I go back to where my car is at, my car is gone. She's not obviously in the car because she's walking towards the club to go find her friend or talk to her friend. So her car is gone. So I'm like, bro, where the fuck is my car? And then like one of the like security guards outside, it was a female, she was like, oh, um, we had somebody move it because it was either that or you get told or you get a move to the doctor. And I was like, so mind you, I'm like irritated. I'm just like so irritated. I'm like, yo, okay, well, where the fuck is my car? So I, I called my friend. I was like, hey, you got a car key? Like, where's the car? And she's like, she doesn't have the car key. And I'm like, well, who the fuck has the car key? And she's like, one of the mean girls, one of her, mean, one of her friends, the mean, one of the mean girls had my car key. So mind you, I really don't really care for these bitches. So maybe my like response or maybe my like the way I had like talked to her was a little kind of bit of rude, but I felt like she was fucking rude all night. But whatever, so when she comes up, and she was, she saw that I was irritated, she said, yo, what's up? I said, what's up? I just need to get my car, like, can you get my car key? She's like, you can ask me nicely. And I said, excuse me? I said, you can stop fucking playing with me and give my goddamn car key. And she said, you are not getting shit. And she got into her friend's car. So I'm like, so I, I went, it was a, a nice girl in the passenger seat. So I was like, hey mama, I was like, I'm just trying to go home. I just need my car key. Can you have your friend give me my car key, please? And so she turns and she's like, okay. So she turns around, she's talked to her friend. She turns me back around. She's like, she said she doesn't have your car key. I mean, I don't know what you want me to do about that. I said, my damn camera keeps like turning off. But yeah, I was like, this fucking girl has my car key and y'all fucking playing with me. So now they're all grouped in like this. I look at them all the same now. Cause I'm like, not all y'all bitches is weird. I feel like that was an act because if that was me, I'm the type of girl where I'm gonna get your car key from my friend. I know my friend's a bitch. I'm not a bitch. You know what I'm saying? I want everybody to just go in their separate ways and be peaceful, whatever. I'm gonna get your car key. That bitch, that was a front. That that lets me know that all birds of a feather really do flock to motherfucking together because that's some bullshit. I don't like it. So at that point, I had already grouped all of them in the same category. I said, oh, now y'all bitches is really trying to play with me. Da -da 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 -da. So the mean girl who had my car key, she rolled her window down and she was like, basically saying like, that's why I'm not getting shit and Hulk, Hulk spit on me. That was another motherfucking trigger. I'm just getting triggered all motherfucking night. This bitch Hulk spit on me. The last motherfucker that Hulk spit on me was my ex-husband. And so when that bitch Hulk spit on me, I literally, I think, I think what it really was, I saw not only her face, but his face. And I started wailing on her ass. It was like she was getting the heat that she deserved plus the heat that I've been wanting to give my ex for so many years. Like, I beat this bitch ass. They end up breaking up the fight or whatever and they end up leaving and I'm still out without no phone, no car key, no purse because um, uh, my purse and stuff was in my, my car and then I didn't have the keys to the car to get in and then, mind you, it's a rental. And then um, my phone, I lost my phone in the fight. So it was just, uh, it was just 
that was just a mess. So even though my friend, the the one that came down to visit, she wasn't around, I still was pissed off at her because I'm like, I just the the why why is it when I hang out with you, I'm always put in some fucked up weird situation. Like for me, you are the common denominator. You gotta go. You gave me anxiety for a reason. Something was telling me to not like let you back in. Something was telling me to not Jay. Don't be this girlfriend. This girl is not a friend. She's not your friend. You know what I'm saying? And I still let my guards down. And I was upset more so at myself than I was with her. But ultimately, I was like, yo, bro, after tonight, like tomorrow, when you get your stuff, like, we're done. Like, I don't want to be friends with you anymore. And she's like, I, why? I didn't do anything. No, I just, the fact that you even, like, hang out with, with weird people like this, like, I don't want to be friends with you. Like, don't watch your business. Don't, please don't call me ever again. My freaking camera about to. Let me let my camera cool down again, and then we're gonna come back and finish this up, cause I'm getting a little exhausted even reminiscing about it. But we gotta get to the point about what happened last week, cause it all ties together. But anyway, so, all right, so, you know, we have the words of exchanges or whatever. But, so the guy that she had met the night before, the one who was taking care of us all that day, um, he offered, he was like, you know, um, I'll take you to home, da da da, you figure it out from there. Okay, cool, take y'all home, blah blah. So we in the car and we're headed back to my place and uh, we're kind of like going back and forth, you know what I'm saying, in the car, kind of like talking shit back and forth to each other. And we get all the way to the house and um, so basically like we were going back and forth in the car and I was telling her like, you know, I need her to get the key from her friend, like, you know, figure it out, like get the key from your friend, da 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 da. So we get all the way to the house and she tells me that the girl is going to meet us back at the place to give me the key. Cool. So she asks the guy if we can go, you know, whatever. And he's like, yeah, of course. So we're headed back to the spot so the girl can give me the key or give her the key to my car. Halfway there, mind you, everything is quiet. Halfway, mind you, this, this, is, the, this is the nasty. This is how you know, like people are just so fucking nasty. And I like, ugh, it just pisses me off even thinking about it. So we're in the car headed to the place and everything is quiet, you know. Halfway there, she literally tells the boy, she literally tells the man, because he's not a boy, he's a grown ass man. He's like in his 40s. She's like, um, hey, I need you to stop the car. And he was like, what? Right here, stop the car right now. And he was like, okay, he stops the car. She he stops the car. She goes to walk to some police cars that's like a couple feet ahead. He had like pulled somebody over or whatever. And next thing you know, the police comes back and he's knocking on the window. And the police officer is talking to the man in the front. I'm in the back seat. Talking to the man in the front. He was like, um, so this young lady's telling me that she needs that she needs this woman to get out of the car because she feels threatened. And he was like, huh? And then I'm like, what? So then the police officer like, that's what she said. Mind you, she's still standing by his car. So he's like, yeah, that's what she's saying. That's what she's saying. So like, what do you, like, how do you want to handle the situation? So me being stubborn, I'm like, you know what? It's okay. I'm going to get out of the car and I'll find my way home. Because literally, so I'm like by, I'm, imagine, I'm like, I'm like a, I say about like at nighttime because it was nighttime and it wasn't no traffic. I say nighttime, I'm probably like a good five minute drive from home if we're not really getting caught by the lights. So about like a 45 minute walk if I'm walking at a consistent pace, kind of sort of. So I'm like, you know what? It's cool. I'm gonna make my way home. So I got out of the car. I, what I should have did was ask the police officer. He was like, yo. But I didn't. Like I got in the car and I just started walking. So I'm walking home. I get all the way home. Mind you, I'm so upset. I'm so frustrated. I'm crying. Like I'm just so angry. Like I'm just, cause it's like you went against everything that you were thinking anyways. And just to be kind of put back in the same situation with this broad. So I get home and as soon as I'm walking up to like my um my loop, like my apartment, why the fuck are they waiting outside of my apartment? So bitch, 
And he's a bitch too, cause what? Y'all pass me. Y'all see me walking. I got heels in my hand and walking barefoot. Y'all see me walking. You pass me to go sit in front of my house and wait for me? Bitch, what? Oh, when I said I wanted to put the pause on her in that moment, but I didn't. I didn't. When I said I wanted to fuck this bitch up, I wanted to fuck this bitch up. I'm like, bro, the audacity, because it's, it's like people, people know who they, I hate to say that out loud, my camera keeps shutting off. People know who they can play with. They know that I'm really not a retaliating type of bitch. You know what I'm saying? In a moment, if you do some shit to me, oh, it's another rap. Like when the homegirl spit on me, oh, it was a rap. You know, but she didn't do anything to me physically. She didn't spit on me. You know what I'm saying? So I had no reason, rhyme, reason to put my hands on her. So, um, yeah, so I, so I was like, bitch, I said, so I did tell her, I was like, bitch, you got me all the way fucked up. I said, you can come back with the police tomorrow morning to come get your shit. Because if you step foot in my apartment, oh, I'm beating your ass. That's what I told her. I did tell her that. I said, if you step foot in my apartment, I'm beating your ass. You come back tomorrow with the police to come get your shit. So, long story short, she ended up not getting her shit until tomorrow. She came with the police to get her stuff. So, the police, you know, she came with the police. The police came. And they was like, oh, can we come in? I said, no, you are not welcome in my apartment. I said, I will pack her things and give it to you. Because if she stepped foot in my apartment, I'm beating her ass. I said that. I, I told the police that. I said, if she stepped foot in my apartment, I'm beating her ass. If, and I told them, but I did tell them, I was like, one of you guys can come into the apartment while I pack her stuff. But if she stepped foot in my apartment, I'm beating her ass. So, long story short, she got her stuff. And, of course, she did what the norm of her. Talking shit about me, close friends, adding my friends to her close friends. doing Just doing the most, like, just being a toxic ass bitch. Alright, cool. Fast forward, two months later, I run into the girl that was drunk in the club. I run into the girl at Hyde. I'm with one of my other homegirls. And, you know, I'm the type of girl, we're in the same setting. Like, it's kind of like the same setting that we were in um, last week, where we ended up having, happened to be in the same section, you know, da da da. So, when I first, that was my first time seeing her after that whole little incident. incident. So, I went up to her and I was like, hey, you know, I, I called my mama. I was like, hey, mama, I don't know if you remember me, because she was drunk. I was like, I don't know if you remember me, but. We well, you know I'm such and such, an uh, old friend of such and such. Whatever me and her got going on, you know what I'm saying, don't have nothing to do with you. I just want you to know that, like, I'm we're good. And she was like, um, she was like, oh no, yeah, um, that don't have nothing to do with me. Um, you were very kind and nice to me. I know you was just trying to look out, da da da. da. Whatever y'all got going on, you know what I'm saying, got nothing to do with me. We good. Cool, cute, good. Everybody having a good old night, you know what I'm saying? We not kikiing it with each other, but everybody comfortable and having a good old night. Fast forward to last week, a whole year and a half later, same situation, we're in the same little area, I look over and I'm like, oh, I, I know her. But you know, I didn't say anything because it won't no need for me to say anything. We not friends, it, but it ain't no problem, ain't no beef, you know, whatever. We already had that, you know, conversation a whole year and a half ago. So, um, but next thing you know, maybe like a couple minutes after that, I see her talking to my friend's guy and like doing this, like talking to him, but pointing at me like this, but she's talking to him with, with aggression. And I said, what the hell going on? But in my brain, I'm like, damn, what the fuck? Okay. So I turned to my friend and I was like, I'm gonna talk to you about her when we leave. So my friend, she, she thought that I was trying to say like, the, what, what she trying to talk to her man. I was like, no, I ain't got nothing to do with that, but I'm gonna talk. Okay, so we're back, I'm trying to hurry up. But anyway, so yeah, uh, she's like doing this to the guy, like, you know, but talk, I can tell she's talking about me, and, but she's like doing this aggressively. And um, so, all right, so I told my homegirl, I was like, I'm gonna talk to you about her when we leave, you know, I'm gonna give you a little rundown, cause what? So, next thing you know, the other birthday girl that was already in the section, she comes up to me and she's like, who? I could tell she was drunk, oh my God. She was like, who, this bitch? Oh, you gotta go. And she like pushes me, but I'm strong. Like people, people it'd be so funny because people would be really underestimating me because I'm five foot one, you know, I am nice, you know. I don't wanna cause no trouble with nobody, but I need people to know Baby, you can't hold me. You can't play with me. Cause 
I would be your ass. Like, for real. So, she had counseled me. She was like, who? This bitch? Oh, you gotta go. And she had pushed me. So I went like this and I caught myself. I said, what the hell going on? As a joy, I said, what the hell going on? And she was like, you bitch, you gotta go. And she pushed me again. So when she pushed me, you, I'm sitting there with my legs crossed and my hands like this. When she hit me, my legs still crossed. What the fuck going on? And she was like, you bitch, you gotta go. And she pushed me. And some guy, he had like snatched her up. Cause she was tripping. He had snatched her up. But all in all, this is happening so fast. He had snatched her up. In my brain, I'm thinking, what the fuck going on? Cause I didn't even know me and that girl had a problem. A whole year and a half ago when I saw you, everything was cool. Everything was peaches and cream. You talk about some, oh, it was no problem. You know, so you, you were so nice. I know you was looking out for me, da 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 Now all of a sudden it's a problem. What the hell going on? So in my brain, I'm like, yo, what the fuck going on? But then I also get up. Cause I'm like, what the fuck going on? And it's like my brain telling me, Najee, it's not worth it. Like, it ain't worth it. It ain't worth it. But my body didn't listen to my brain. And I started wailing on her. So I was fighting a girl. Uh, another girl had jumped in. I couldn't even see her face. And then homegirl, the one with the, with the problem, the one, the familiar face girl, she jumped in. Next thing you know, next thing you know, uh, one of the big old security guards, he had like grabbed me. And then um, I was like, can you just please give me my purse, my shoes, and my phone? Like, I'm just ready to go, blah, blah, blah. So he's like, just wait outside, just wait outside. Because everybody saw what happened. So everybody knew that I wasn't the problem. So he comes outside with my phone. He comes outside with my phone. My phone and my purse. He comes outside with my phone and my purse. And um, mind you, <laughs> I didn't even realize that I got a wig in one hand and blood on the other hand. Like literally, a, a, somebody's wig in one hand. I didn't, I was so heated, I didn't even realize that I, I'm like holding a wig. And then blood on the other hand. So I'm like, this is crazy. So the guy comes inside, he brings in my stuff. And um, so then I see the girl, the one who originally pushed me, she comes outside. And I couldn't even tell in that moment that she didn't have a wig on. Cause you know, all these girls, mind you, all these girls are like, you know, Soft hair, light skin, like dancer looking type of vibes. There's some them some thicker girls. They're not like my size. They're thicker girls. And so I couldn't even tell that she didn't have a wig on. It just looked like she had a slip back. Cause it was her hair or whatever. But I'm looking and I'm like, oh, in my brain, I'm like, oh, this is her fucking wig. So I was like, bro, what's your problem? Girl, I don't even know you. And so she was just looking at me like with the double eye. She didn't say nothing. She was just looking at me like with the double eye, like she was possessed. And then homegirl, the familiar face girl, she came out. This girl had a gash on her head, literally blood running down her face. She looked like she came out of a Carrie movie. And I'm like, girl, all that for what? Now you look stupid, and for what? What was the problem? I didn't even know we had a problem. And she's like, don't talk to me, don't talk to me. And I'm like, bro, like what was the problem? Because this is, this is retarded, like, do you want to talk about it? And then she's like, don't talk to me, and I'm like, Okay, bitch, whatever. You look stupid, not me. So, I go to the car. Long story short, um, I'm still waiting for my shoes. So, like, a security guard, he came over. He was like, um, excuse me. This is, like, maybe, like, 20 minutes later. Because I didn't drive, mind you. And my friend, she's, like, out front trying to figure whatever out, talking to, you know, her guy and whatever. So, the security guard comes to the car, and he's like, excuse me. I don't think my camera wants me to tell the story. But anyways, so... Um, yeah, the security guard comes over. He's like, is everything okay? Like, are you okay? Like, you need me? I was like, no, I'm fine. He was like, do you mind if I grab this young lady wig? Mind you, I still had it. It was in a car. So I was like, no, I don't mind. But do you mind finding my shoes first? <laughs> so he was like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to go find it. I'll be right back. So he goes, find my shoes, burn my shoes. I give him her wig. Because, I, like I said, I'm not that type of girl. I don't have the desire to be on no toxic shit, like, but you're not about to play with me, and you're not about to, no, you're not about to play with me, you're not about to put your hands on me and think that that, think that she gonna be sweet, no, so, long story short, yeah, I gave him her wig or whatever, and that was that, fast forward to the next day, mind you, it just really messed up my day, cause I, I, me and my other friend, um, Chelsea, the one that you all saw in the car, we were talking about going to the Beyonce concert because, you know what I'm saying, we didn't go, we didn't plan on going, but then we were like, oh, we should go, today's the last day, Monday, we should go. 
and we were gonna go that day but i just was not in the mood like it just really messed up my week like that night really messed up my week because like it just drained me like my energy was so low i was like so upset like i was still upset and i i hated the idea in my brain i'm like damn so now when i go outside i gotta be on alert like i can't even be like i can't even like having a good time because i'm thinking somebody gonna run up on me and put their hands on me like no like i was just so irritated that day so i ended up not going to the beyonce concert but my friend um, whose birthday it was that night she calls me and she tells me that the girl reached out to her like got her number reached out to her and wanted to reach out to me i'm like for what and she was like oh well she actually wanted to apologize because um she knew that she was in the wrong and that her and her friend that night the familiar face her and the familiar face girl which are friends got into it that night um because drunk girl realized that that was just some bullshit like it was all for nothing literally all for nothing so they got into that night apparently they're no longer friends and that the home girl the one that put her hands on me she called me and wanted to apologize for that and or she she wanted to call me to apologize but i was like no i don't need her to call me but you can tell her that i do accept her apology and i really do appreciate it and that was that so it kind of made me feel a little better because i'm like i don't got time to be going outside like i'm trying to have a good time and then you know i gotta worry about some girls trying to put their hands on me for nothing like you don't even know me like what was and i'm still confused on why familiar face girl even have a problem with me so yeah that was that i'm just gonna end this vlog right here right now and start recording some content for the day so yeah, that was that. That's why I've been. That's why it took me so long to post this vlog, but hey.